this is Nitin Dahad with EE Times. I'm here at the Infineon Oktobertech in uh, the, the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California. I'm talking to Thomas Rostek, uh, who's the division president uh, at Infineon Technologies. Uh, Thomas, hello, how are you? Yeah, not the, rest, not the rest. Nice to see you again, Nitin. Yeah, uh, yeah I think uh, we keep meeting at the great locations, uh, talking about great technologies. Um, so. That's what we're here for. Exactly. Now, we're going to be talking today about Edge AI and uh, Infineon's made some announcements and uh, it's been doing for, for quite a few years, but um, tell me, uh, yeah, we hear all about Edge AI and yeah, it, everything is Edge AI nowadays. I've been writing about it for a while, but tell us a little bit about, yeah, what, what's the reality? What's, what's happening? So, perfect. So, I, I think overall Edge AI is a new capability. You're saying we talk about for about it for a while, but it really now becomes true. Okay. So every I would say every IoT device in the future will have a certain portion of Edge AI. And what is Edge AI now? Um, Edge AI is really bringing AI capabilities into the device. Let's say that we have in our hands, that we have in our house. Does it replace cloud? No, it doesn't. It will complement um, with the cloud, um, and the two will work work together work together seamlessly, right? But um, in, in some areas, the edge has some advantages. Um, and I give you a few of these. So the first one is we, ever, we always assume that we are always connected. Yes. And we are not. <laughs> so at least I experience, even in the middle of Germany, where I'm coming from, I, I ex um, experience uh, areas where you don't have connection. You still want your device to work. The next one is latency. There's a lot of devices which cannot, cannot basically work with, with latency. So the delay that you need if you send it to the cloud and it's coming, coming back. If you have real-time operations, it needs, to, it needs to really be fast. Yes. Right? The next one is power is a, is a very critical thing. Yeah. So power, if you, if you ask the cloud, if you send a question to the cloud, the power um, that you need for this on the whole system um, is enormous and we can reduce it actually we can re reduce it on set areas up to 98 percent so really really significant right and the last thing is about security right obviously if data doesn't have to leave the device then um, it's it's less vulnerable right and so your privacy is is better protected now, but how much uh, how much can you do on the edge and I think that will lead to some of what you're doing but how much can you do on the edge and and I think the capabilities have moved on, moved on and that's why I think we're seeing a lot more uh, uh, of uh, talk about AJI. Is that right? You absolutely, you are absolutely right. So the performance that you have available on the uh, on the edge in the devices is increasing, yeah. right? Um, and now with our latest um, uh, announcement that we basically do today, our PSOC Edge, right? We we have reached a level where we supporting um, it's things like video, things like audio already. In the, in the edge. So we even move into the MPU space um, and they are able to provide that, that performance at a very low power. Because what you have to keep in mind always, many, many of the devices are battery powered. So, the, and we need a long, uh, long lifetime for that. Exactly. And we add to this because the hardware is one thing, but we want to come to AI, to edge AI. So what we need then is um, the AI models. And what we, basically announced at the same time next to PSOC Edge is our DeepCraft AI suite. Okay. What is this? It's a development environment for our customers to develop their own models. Mm. And give you, give you an example. Um, we do have some models available for our customers, but customers come up with interesting things that we haven't ever thought about. One example is there's a customer uh, looking to detect illegal logging. Yes. So that means um, in the forest, right? So that means there's a different kind of sound and, and things that they have to bring together to make that happen. And this, this is obviously something only the customer then finally can do. So, so they can de deploy those modules on, on the device. Correct. And they can first develop it. So they can train, yeah. they can train the model, right? Mm -hmm. With the voices they have. Yeah. And they don't have to be with our DeepCraft um, AI suite. They don't have to be experts on AI, but they have to be experts in the application they want to serve, yeah. right? And with this, then they can create the model, and then the model is um, is configured so it can run on the on the piece of edge. Okay. Now you've talked a little bit about already, but what what's Infineon doing in this space? Yeah, I think the 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 main thing that we we are providing the components so the customers can 
do their what they need to do, what, what they are really differentiating with their products. Mm. So the microcontroller is the one thing. Yeah. Um, the development environment is, is the next one. And there's one important aspect as well, which is the security aspect, right? Is um, beside the fact that all devices need to be secure, there are regulations upcoming. Um, and uh, these regulations, for example, in, in Europe, as you know, CRA, the CRA, the yeah. Cyber Resilience Act, yeah. and this does require quite, um, uh, quite some uh, defense mechanisms of the device. And I mean, in the US also, you've got the cyber trust, cyber mark, cyber you're, trust. You're right. It's not. It's also in Singapore. So there's quite some some around the world. And uh, PSOC Edge now is the first product to have the so-called PSA level four defense mechanism. So I think when, with this, we're also setting a standard here. Interesting. Interesting. And now, in in uh, what are the kind of examples? of things you've seen customers do. Maybe that's something we can probably ha just highlight so people can understand here. Absolutely. I think one, one thing is um, using voice recognition or speech recognition to, to perform. So using different methods of HMI, yeah. right? And then to perform uh, on this, for example, for smartwatches like this one, right? Uh, but also doing face recognition a face recognition, for example, for a smart... Like, like we have going right back there. Right, like the one in the back. Yeah. If you turn around, you won't be in... Uh, as that's, you're not that's enrolled. Free. <laughs> as you are not enrolled, you are not recognized. I am enrolled, so I'm identified as user three. Okay, yeah. And again, what is super important is on a very, very low power base. Okay. What excites you right now about the industry? So, it's overall, the, the IoT is now going, moving into a new dimension. So in the past, the IoT was more like a, an interface for humans to, to talk to the cloud. Right? But now devices are starting to interact more and more with each other based on the policies and the guidelines we have given it. And this for Infineon is super exciting because if you look around here at the October Tech, it's not just the microcontrollers, it's the sensors, it's yeah. the power devices, yeah. um, it's uh, the radars, for example, that you have in here. Um, and with all this, we we bring the foundation for our customers to build. Oh, there's plenty of demos around here. Yes. Absolutely. It's, yeah, it's kind of Well, you will look around. I will do. Thomas, thank you very much. You're more than welcome. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.